Hi everyone, I'm Jason Juritich, and this is The Mobile Philosopher. In this video, we're going to see some advanced options in relationship to the dynamic dependent dropdown list and resolve some doubts that had also been presented in relation to a video I had already done. Now, the first thing we want to clarify is in relationship to the named ranges. That means this whole entire thing in relationship to this script here only works because of the fact we have what we call named ranges. That means if I go to data here and to named ranges, I'm going to see that a named range basically is a range that I have used letters to represent. That's, in other words, we call it name, but it's basically just a bunch of letters so that I don't have to repeat this every single time that I'm putting the stuff in. Now, in relationship to the script, what this does basically is that when I choose something from one column and another arrow pops out here, basically what the script is saying is that if I have something in cell a1 that represents a name of a named range, then I'm going to expand that range as a dropdown list in the column beside it. It's got nothing to do with something like a filter or a query. So that anything that you guys have used beforehand in relationship to those two is not going to work here because it's only trying to make connection between if I have something that looks like a name of a name range, then I'm going to expand that as a drop-down list in the column beside it or in whatever column I choose, which I'm going to show now. So if you're trying to do something different than that, this will not work. If you understand how these name ranges are working, then what you need to do is make sure that you have named your ranges correctly. If for some reason you think you named it something and you really named it something else, you are obviously going to get an error each time you try to put it into the cells and you won't get anything else out in the other columns beside it. So let's see how this works in a more advanced way. I'm gonna put here what I did in the other video, which is basically a named range that we have as our basis, the first general group, uh, so to speak. So here we're gonna to go to validation and we're gonna put here, we're gonna put main, because that's our biggest group. We're gonna save that. And then like always, do we grab that, bring it down, paste it, and then we have it. That's always gonna be the first step. We have to do something manual. We have to put our first column, our, our point of reference, so that everything else can follow it. Now that I have that, if I go back to the script, you can see here that a column is just simply equal to one. This is one of the two numbers here that we have, okay, as you can see. This one is the column, as we would call, the point of reference, meaning that one is equal to column A. And then down here we have a column plus one. That means where do I expand the range that's in relationship to this name range that's going to pop up in column A in this case? Okay, and then the second thing here is says else if, and this is this, the, the next part of it, which is, okay, if I have then in column B a named range, then I will again in column C, we'll say what this means is basically, okay, if I have column B here plus one, which is column C, then I have it there, then I'm going to expand that range there. That's all that this is doing. So what does that mean? That means if I have this here and I click on this guy here, then this will pop out here and I will be able to use this expanded range, which you've already named, which was AAAA, touch that, and then it will pop this one out briefly after, so I can choose that. So basically these are just name ranges, meaning the name range AAA, please expand it. Okay, what, what, what can I expand here? Which all these three, which is what I've already named. Because if I go to data and I go to named ranges, I'm going to see that AA is B3 to B1000. So I go here, B3 to 1000, and that's what's in this column. It makes no difference what's in this column or where this column is. It could be in any sheet, anywhere in the spreadsheet. It could be in any cells. It makes no difference. You could have 25 sheets here and have this list in any sheet, anywhere you want, in the, in the corner down below, up at top. It makes no difference. It does not have to be like this. So you can have it anywhere you want. As long as it's named, it will grab that from anywhere. You could even probably, I don't even know because I haven't tried it, you could even probably use a import range function in which you could grab a range from somewhere else in a completely different spreadsheet, present it here, and then grab that. So you can do, this can be very complex. What I'm trying to underline here is it's got nothing to do with it being in B3. That's got nothing to do with it. It's just that it was named that and the cells we want to grab are in this area. So after we have that, as you can see, they come out perfectly fine. But I can also play around with the columns. So first of all, we're going to grab these. We're going to get rid of this validation. 
we're going to remove that. And then we're going to change the numbers here. Okay, we're still going to use this point of reference as one. This is column A. But now we're going to add. We're going to say, give me four columns on top of that. So that's going to brag me to five. So we have one, two, three, four, five. This is going to pop out now in E. Why? Because I have this as plus four, one plus four. And then if I want the sub subgroup to come out, this one has to be a five. And then this one will be a plus one out from that. Okay, so let's save this. Go back over here. And now we're going to choose, for example, B. And then as you can see in column E, out pops another drop down list, but based on this one. And then after finish that, then this one comes out too. So you can change these any way you want. If I don't want this one right next to E, I can pop this one out in I, and I can have them all separate. So these do not have to be next to each other. I can have them completely separate all over the place as long as I have the points of reference here. Okay. So now that we've clarified that, I'm going to clarify uh, the way of adding a completely new drop-down list that's got nothing to do with this first one here. Let's do the same thing. We're just going to take another group of the same type of script. You're just going to copy it down, literally. We're going to activate this guy. Okay. And here, so, so we have to find out what column we want this. We want an H. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. H is 8. So we have here, we have 8. That's where we stuck here. Okay. And this is going to be our main column. That's going to be the manual column. What does that mean? That means I'm going to grab now from sheet 3. I added a, a completely new group here. And this one's going to be called main 1. So I'm going to go over here. And as we did before, data, validation, and I'm going to put main one here. Add that here, save, do the same thing we do before. So that one's all ready to go. So now the manual column that I need is the point of reference has now been added. If I go over here, I've already had these things set. So eight and the subgroup's going to be in plus one. That's going to be in column nine. And then column nine becomes the point of reference. And then plus one, column 10 for the sub subgroup. Let's see if that works. Let's make sure this is saved. Going over here, grabbing this guy. And as you can see, this pops out like so. I grab that subgroup and then I grab this one here and it works out perfectly. So as you can see, it's the only thing you have to do is make sure you have a one, the first column, which is the manual column as the main point of reference, this one here or this one here. And then the rest of them are just based upon that one column. Now, as you can see, this works out perfectly fine. But what happens if I just want to repeat this guy? What happens if I want a second group of these three? That's not a problem. Let's fix these guys up real quick. Don't confuse the poor guy. Okay, so let's get rid of all these guys. Let's drag this over. Get rid of data. Validation. Remove. And now we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to delete this. And instead of putting the main group of VV, we're just going to add this group. So we'll go over here, data validation again. Go back, put this in main. Press save. Grab him, drag him down, paste him, go back up. And then here, if, if I keep on going, I don't even have to touch the script now. All I have to do is go over here, grab this. And when I go over here, voila, out pops the subgroup of the first main group I have. Okay, so this works out perfectly. It makes no difference. You can have these all spread out on one sheet. You can have many different types of groups and they all work and you can separate the columns from each other as long as you understand that you have to use named ranges and everything is based upon the name of the range and the array of that named range. So anything that you put in a column, so you can have literally hundreds of options pop out and you can add things here and they will automatically be added. I don't need to redo the script or the ranges. I just simply put something else here and it will automatically come out as another option. So you can modify this any way you want. I hope this resolves the doubts that people have had and offers you the possibilities of making more advanced dynamic drop-down lists in your own spreadsheets. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments below, and I will try to get, them, to, get to them as soon as I can. Thanks a bunch. Take care.